Hello everybody, Raspberry Barrel here, and we're back at it again. Our small hiatus is over, I just got back from the beach. Thank you all for your patience. And now that I'm back, I'm ready to start what's for me, the summer off, and I have a lot of ideas planned. So keep an eye out for those new videos. And for anyone that follows me on any of my other social media besides DeviantArt, you might know some other fandoms that I'm also a part of that I'm going to be making some videos on as well. But today we're back at it again to read another biography of Muni. And we're going to be reading the, a biography by Muni historian on DeviantArt, Celine the Expander, who is our next queen in the Muni historian line her mother being Alexandra. And you guys have already had to wait a bit, so let's just get right into it. Please forgive me if I stutter, hesitate, or mispronounce anything, and for any noises in the background, let's begin. Celine the Expander. A girl with a dream in her head, and a magic wand in her hand, she spread out the Mumins, to other continental lands. Selene, the Expander, lived Gravnock 45th, 979 BS through Zamoranor 12th, 883 BS, was queen 958 BS through 918 BS, married to a Zulon dragonfly. Children, Dipper Butterfly, Leo Butterfly, Lazuli. Phobos Butterfly, Diemos Butterfly, and Planet Butterfly. The first butterfly princess, Celine Butterfly, was born on Gravnok 45th, 979 BS, on the night of the first day of spring which was also the night where the twin moons, Phobos and Diemos, turned red and spread the red throughout the birth room. Selene's gray eyes came from her father, King Pines. Her yellow hair wasn't seen by her family. And on her cheeks, she bared three pointed silver crowns, befitting her status as the first butterfly princess and future queen. She was also born with the loudest set of lungs and only stopped when placed in the arms of her mother, Alexandra. With special sound crystals, Celine slept in her own chamber, starting at a couple weeks old. The crystals were next to her, crib, so her parents could hear her crying. Until she started walking, Celine's life was pretty baby standard. But when she learned to walk, she would run all over the castle and would frequently use the secret passageways, making this a hair-tearing frustration for her babysitters. But her life majorly changed on Splenix 14th, 976 BS, when her brother Corvus was born. Celine was barely three years old and at the time, was barely three years old at the time, so had no memories as an only child, very welcoming of Corvus, who had their father's hair and one of their mother's eyes. The other was from their grandfather, and had thick, and he had thick crescent light blue moons on his cheeks. Growing up in a well-guarded castle, the two siblings had little supervision, and the two often snuck away, snuck away from those who were supervising. The two basically inseparable. When one was spotted, the other was within five feet. After almost three years of having a brother, the two would gain a sister. Celine's sister, Hecate, was born in the image of their mother, Alexandra, with black hair and blue eyes and purple knots that came to three points. Growing up, the three caused major trouble for the staff. Not just them running off, but they also caused trouble as well. An example being they found a secret entrance to the kitchen and once put 
fire sand in the soup, causing fire to sprue out, out of the mouths of their parents during lunch. Celine was also close with her oldest cousin, Scarlet, her uncle Red's daughter, who looked like him and had golden fire marks on her right cheek, though she was eight years older. In 970 BS, Celine, Scarlet, and their other cousin, Azulon, snuck out of the castle using dimensional scissors Scarlet swiped from Hecapu and went to the forbidden forest of certain death. Selene and Azulon had both read about this place, but it was a whole new wonder, yes, wonder, to them, making the two cousins eager about the outside world. Two years later, in Gravnock 58, 968 BS, Selene and her family went to the beaches near the Golden Forest and got her two younger siblings to explore the forest with her. But, but not too far in, the three siblings ran into a figure only read about in stories, Seth the Septarian. The three immediately ran away from him, but he managed to grab Hecate, who screamed for her, who screamed for her sister, but Selene only froze as she saw her sister cut several times in the face with a blue stone like a blade. Her sister's face soaked with blood. Finally, Corvus charged at him, but was easily thrown off. Seth stopped the attack when their parents came rushing after, hearing Hecate scream. Her two uncles, Red and Zim, went full magic form and chased him off. But her grandmother, Saint Mo, was the one who really made him pay later. Her aunt Jade did what she could to help Hecate. But even when combined with her sister, Queen Lapis, the two daughters of Pearl, and even with Alexandra's magic, Hecate's face was permanently scarred and would have to wear a veil to cover it. Nothing between Selene and Hecate would ever be the same after that day. A few weeks later, their brother Corvus went away to their uncle Spruce to train properly. One would think Selene would try to reach out to Hecate and was shut out, but it was the other way around. Hecate was of course upset with her sister, but wanted to talk with her sister, but Selene shut her out. She couldn't handle what she had done, which was nothing. This sent Selene down a dark mindset, losing the twinkle in her eyes she had when she was young. Selene continued to mentally punish herself, which was almost nightly as Hecate had to remove her veil to eat dinner, and nothing physically could be done to Selene to match what was happening in her mind when she saw her sister's face. This depression did not go unnoticed by her family, who tried to get her to open up, but she just shut everyone out, not just her sister, but her parents as well. This left her sister Hecate alone, and, and this would lead her down a her own dark path. Sisterly Separation The only time Selene would smile was when she received letters from her brother Corvus, and even then it wouldn't last. When she, when she turned 13 in 966 BS, her parents decided to throw her a large ball, inviting the other kings and queens and their heirs. This would become the Silver Bell Ball, a yearly ball attended by the rulers of Muni and, the, and their next in lines. While Selene had only a plain face the entire time. There was one point where she smiled, and that was when she danced with her cousin Azulon. But her depression still stayed. No matter what, neither Alexandra nor Pines could make their daughter happy or open her up. But during summer that but during summer that year, Celine got a visit from her cousin Azulon, a private visit. He asked her what was wrong, and she just spilled her guts to him everything including how she felt she wasn't wasn't worthy of being the future queen but azulon listened really listened to her and they had a meaningful conversation that lasted for hours she unloaded things that she had never told anyone one of which was her f feeling inadequate about being a future queen but azulon comforted her actually listening and helped her feel better than she had in years she even listened to him about his own family troubles, how his little brother, Brulo, almost died from a fall, 
and Celine actually cared, the first time she cared about anyone in years. The two continued to talk for hours into the night, and, a, and at midday, when Alexandra went to see her daughter, who hadn't been down for breakfast or lunch, found a Zulon sli sleeping in Celine's chest. When her mother left the room, Celine took the sword from her bedside from beside her bed and cut off her braid. She was starting over in a new and better light. Her eye twinkle that was lost came back. And the first thing she did was go to her sister Hecate. But the damage was done, and this time it was Hecate who shut her sister out. But Celine did not let it stop her from reigniting her long lost spark. She began to really care about others, something Azulon helped her to see was important for a future queen. After months of regaining her spark, Celine was known to be a good and modelish princess. Two days before her 14th birthday, her brother Corvus returned from their uncle Spruce, who also came with his family for Celine's birthday. She and Hecate hugged Corvus at the same time. The first time the two sisters had touched each other since he left almost a full three years ago. Her brother didn't change too much physically. Her brother was radiating with confidence and authority beyond his age. On her birthday, her mother gave her the magic wand. Celine didn't expect it, even though she knew her mother received it from her mother when she turned 14. When Celine took the wand, it turned into a long gray wand with a silver crescent moon at the top with a blue gem in it. It was then her mother announced it would be a tradition to pass the wand to the next heir on her 14th birthday, but Celine was a couple decades away from that. While Celine was able to do basic attack and defense spells with ease, she wanted to do something that really challenged the known structure of magic. Then it came to her. To help brighten her life, Celine took dance lessons and wondered if she could incorporate that into her spells, it took some practice and explosions, many explosions, but she created a new method of spell casting, incantation dances. Not unlike the movements required to bring out the full power of the Warnicorn Stampede, these spells required a series of movements to enact their effect. Most of her dances summoned a different elemental blast, and these spells weren't simple, like Rutum Fullman, which only summons a couple lightning bolts. Celine's lightning dance was set to summon the lightning of five storms. Her techniques would be taught to others outside of the Butterfly family and would evolve into several variations and inspirations. While there are dozens of spells in modern times that have been derived from these dances, the original dances that Celine put in the book of spells were lost when it and the castle burned in 3 BS. Her invention of these techniques set the bar pretty high when she was evaluated by Baby, the creature her mother made to evaluate her magic training, as she was the first Baby evaluated. But Celine would go on to create other types of spells too. Celine practicing her dances. The next year, 964 BS, was pretty big for Celine. It started a couple of weeks after she turned 15. And the same day her cousin Azulon's family dropped by for a visit. They had arrived in time for breakfast, and her younger cousin, Brulo, noticed something red on her hand. She initially thought it was jam and tried to wipe it off. But upon a closer inspection, it was red hearts. Nuberty had begun. She screamed at this realization. Azulon grabbed her other hand to ask what was wrong, and it immediately became coated in so many hearts it turned red. Celine was, of course, immediately escorted to the bunker, and the layer doors were shut just as soon as the hearts had covered her entire body. Nuberty had no time limit. It could be a couple of hours, or in Celine's case, all day. When she returned to normal by dinner, she had two tiny red wings that she showed everyone. That evening, her brother Corvus saw her running down the hallway, gagging, and asked what was wrong, only replying that she made a terrible mistake. 
On the summer solstice, Cork 20th, that year, her cousin Scarlet was crowned Queen Firefly. Seeing her cousin becoming queen made Celine wonder about when she herself would become queen. What she would leave behind. Her mother created the Butterfly Kingdom and her grandmother fought for independence, and Celine wanted to do something grand during her future reign. After hearing about the discovery of the northern coastline, Celine began to think about the land they were on and the ocean that surrounded them. She organized a beach trip with her dragonfly cousins to go to the settler's sh shore, the site where her grandmother Mo washed ashore many decades ago. While it was a fun trip for the younger ones, Celine took it as an opportunity to see through the eyes of her grandmother. that that beach was the very beginning of her people and wondered if the answers to their origins lied just beyond the horizon. She recalled from the book that her mother felt like the monster's population doubled overnight, so they must have come from somewhere. When she was staring off into the sunset, her cousin Azulon asked what she was thinking about, and after she told him, she asked if he would be willing to go with her if she pursued this, and Azulon said he would, a little too eagerly. It was then Celine began making her plans to travel out beyond the ocean, though it would be years before this dream would be accomplished. The next year, her brother Corvus turned 13, and was able to compete in that year's spring tournament, and bet the six-year champ, Princess Ruby Firefly, their cousin, but caught the attention of Veresa Phoenix, third child of Ash Phoenix, and a year older than Celine herself. Normally, the Phoenix King congratulated the winner, and since her brother Blazon was the new king, he was supposed to congratulate Corvus. But Celine saw Brasa kick her brother in the shin and walked out instead. She also noticed a blush on both Brasa and Corvus's faces as well, and made a small laugh. Celine spent time in the library looking up ships wondering if there was a way to make them any bigger when she ran into her sister Hecate. Her sister had been checking out a book on magic, which Celine found odd as her sister was only 10 years away from using any magic herself. But when she asked her sister about it, she actually answered, saying she wanted to know about magic because she was curious why it was unable to heal the scars on her face from years ago. Celine was no architect, but did manage to make well-structured models and plans for large boats capable of holding several dozen humans, as well as supplies. Though she didn't share these plans with anyone other than Azulon, who was the only one who knew of her dream of exploration. By the time she was 17, she had started to develop a crush on Azulon, but due to them being cousins, she buried them as a simple crush that would fade away with time. Celine spent a lot of time secretly preparing for her future reign as queen, particularly of the dream of exploration. She kept it secret from her main family, but her cousin Azulon and Scarlet knew, and she had their support. But her sneaky brother Corvus found out, and was actually impressed by her organization, and actually helped her out. By the time Celine approached 18, she had plans fully thought out and secretly stashed it away with patience till she was queen to enact her plans. Celine planning her future colony. Celine's wand. Celine's wand handle was butcher ashwood, a wood whose broken bark is so sharp it can cut flesh, so it's used by butchers. The crescent in the handle is a rare moonstone found in the autumn forest of the Spiderbite Kingdom. The charger was mother of pearl, found inside of the seashells that's placed into the lower crescent moon, made of stone like the rope crescent. The bell area of the wand is a carved piece of actual moon rock, and the small crystal is a light blue diamond. After she got her wand, the mill horse Cadence retired, a new mill horse named Cel Celeste took on the role. Celine's crown was a light-colored silver and had three blood agates in it. Legend says blood agates form from the blood of the fallen, and coincidentally, the very agates in her crown were mined just outside of Thamor, where two major battles and blood during the 
during the Mean Dependence War occurred. And that was part one of the biography of Selene the Expander by a meaning historian on DeviantArt. If you want to go straight to part two and not wait for me, please go check out his DeviantArt page, as well as, you know, check out all the rest of the art and stories. And thank you, Muni Historian, for allowing us to read this biography. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video for part two. Bye-bye for now. Have a great rest of your day.